Hello viewers, this is Kofi JC TV, the number one online TV channel in the whole of Western and Central region of Ghana. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Today, with the great pleasure of Allah, we have one of the prominent, the renowned Islamic scholar. We are going to have one-on-one -on -one interview with him. He is a motivational speaker, a prolific writer, and a debater. To introduce him, he is known by many names. Some people even call him the Facebook Sheikh, and many more. That's not what we are here for. I'm going to be your host. My name is Nuhu Ahmed. You can call me Senu. Now, to our prominent and renowned Islamic scholar. But don't forget, he is also the founder and director of Saitun Dawa Institute with the headquarters at Washington, D.C. Today, I have the privilege to introduce you to Sheikh Ahmed Muhammad Awal. Sheikh, salam alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Sheikh, how are you? Wallahi, alhamdulillah, I'm doing very, very well. I'm so very well, yes. <laughs> Before we go on, um, about two or three weeks ago, you were in uh, Liberia. What was the mission over there? Yes, of course, I was uh, in Liberia for the um, last three weeks, and I stayed there for, um, I think, nine days. And the reason for me being in Liberia to do my program uh, was that I was... Uh, the Liberian Muslim community uh, called me when I was in the United States and they said they want to um, you know, celebrate the fact that uh, the president of uh, Liberia, uh, George uh, Opon Weir, what he's been doing for the Muslim community is so very good. He supports the Muslim community each and every time and the only thing they can do is to thank him. And the better way they think they should thank him is to invite me to come to Liberia and go on him and decorate him and appreciate him and, uh, you know, let him understand that uh, the Muslim really did not forget the good things he's been doing for the community. And so that's what I did. And so when I went to Liberia, I did a lot of programs. I, I, I spoke myself and the president uh, at the, the national stadium. And uh, there's a lot of people that came, unbelievable. There's a lot of people. And then we went to different villages and communities and universities and colleges. And I present to them, you know, about Islam. And also I talked. 90% about peace and uh, how to live together side by side with the Christian community, with those who don't even believe in any religion at all. That is Islam, what Islam entails. So, you know, it is my duty to do the best that I can to let people understand what Islam is all about. It's not about fighting, it's not about killing like what people think. You know, it's not about Sharia, you know, we're going to chop off your hand, this and that. People have this kind of misconception, and it's about time that we remove the misconception from the eye thinking and restore it with the pristine pure Islam as was supposed as was taught by you know the, 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 the prophet may peace be upon him inshallah okay um, listeners you can also follow us on Facebook at Kofi Jesse TV on Instagram and Twitter Kofi Jesse TV the Kofi is spelled K-O-F-Y and the Jesse is J-E-S-S-E -S -S -E. that's Kofi Jesse you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel Please kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel on Coffee Jesse TV. Um, Sheikh, many people just hear the name Sheikh Muhammad Awal, Sheikh Muhammad Awal. They don't know anything about you, just being a follower. So for your followers and your fans to know a little bit about you is the reason why we are here today. So Sheikh, in briefly, who is Sheikh Muhammad Ahmed Awal? Alhamdulillah uh, Rabbil Alameen. That is my name. Uh, the Sheikh was added to the name. I don't know why, but my name is Ahmed Muhammad Awal. I was born and raised in Cape Coast, you know. Um, but I left Cape Coast and went to Nigeria when I was young. My, my grandfather came from uh, Nigeria. He's a Fulani person. So when I grew up a little bit, they sent me back to, um, you know, the village so I could know my route and stuff like that. So I fed my education. After completing, you know, secondary school, I did one year in Owas, Opokuwari Secondary School. Yeah, I did one year. From there, they took me to Nigeria, where I completed my two cycles of years. Then I went to College of Agriculture. From there, I went to Kaduna Polytechnic, and that is, uh, you know, where I did my studies. Then I came back to Ghana, because, of course, you know, born and raised here, my 
everybody's here. And so eventually I went to the state. And uh, I went to the state and uh, I stayed there for quite a long time. And from there, I decided to research on Islam. You know, because what I've seen about uh, Islam in America, I decided, okay, I think we have to let them understand what Islam is all about because they don't have the pristine, pure understanding of Islam. And that is when I launched my research, and eventually I went to study with Ahmedida in South Africa. I did comparative religion, and then I came back. I'm a science student, so I juxtaposed science and comparative, and eventually I found my way presenting Islam using science, logic, you know, uh, Quran, Bible, stuff like that. And alhamdulillah, the success is overwhelming, and we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for making it easy for us to be able to present Islam. So in a nutshell, that is me. That, that is Sheikh Mohammed Awal. Um, but right now, I'm in Cape Coast. That is my humble home. Uh, you just came to visit me, and so uh, that's 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 about it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We are at the residence of Sheikh Mohammed Awal at Akekru. Um, Sheikh, we all know, as you said, you went to America. You went to America. Was the reason for you going to America about going to make money or going to study about? Uh, um, comparative religion. Okay, uh, at the very inception, the intention was to go to America after finishing my education, go get a job, you know, make some money, come back home and enjoy just like anybody else. But when I went, as fate had it, I met Sheikh Ahmed did that, and uh, that was the turning point. So I decided I'm going to do the same thing that he's doing. What he was doing was, I just love him so much that I, I want to be like him. And that was the turning point. So I opted to uh, do some Islamic studies, and I did. So all my knowledge that you think, if you think I have any knowledge, which I don't think so, but whatever knowledge you think that I have, I learned that in America. Uh, people think America, oh man, it's Michael Jackson, dancing, disco, club. Yeah, there is all those kind of stuff. But if you want to, uh, whatever you want to do in America, you could do it. So a lot of people think I went to Saudi Arabia. I never go to any Arab country to learn. I learn everything in America. And so... Uh, right now, I found myself uh, uh, doing lectures on Islam for the past 30 years. I've been to America 34 years. For the past 30 years, that's what I do, travel all over the world and try to do the best that I can to um, present Islam, you know, giving lectures and symposiums and having dialogue and debate and, you know, stuff like that. And, and that's, what I'm, that's, 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 that's what I found myself in, inshallah. Okay. Um, we are here with Sheikh Mohammed Awad having one in one interview with him. Um, as your host, I'm Ahmed Nubi. Enjoy being the cameraman. He's also um, throwing his support behind. Um, Sheikh, you've been mentioning being a debater and a writer. Let's first talk about um, your writing skills. Which kind of books and how many books have you written? First of all, I write about uh, the subject that I specialize on. Knowledge is too big. You know, uh, the Messenger Salah Salam, he said, uh, Knowledge is like the sand at seashore. So, you can, you know, so I, I, I relied on my specialty, that is uh, the sciences of Islam, and comparative religion and logic. And this, on this I wrote about five books. The, the, the sixth one is uh, still, you know, I'm working on it. I don't have too much time to be writing because I travel a lot. So the first book that I wrote was uh, uh, Muhammad in the Scriptures. That was the first book that I wrote. And I wrote Islam and Christianity, a comparative analysis, volume one. Then I wrote Islam and Science, volume one. Then I wrote, again, 99 Reasons Why Jesus is Not God. Um, the topic sounds intimidating, but uh, it, is, it is sort of like a journalistic kind of uh, approach. If I write 99 reasons why Jesus is not God, a lot of Christians would want to read that book to see. And if in reading that book, the information that I've given, a lot of them have said, wow, we never know that Islam is like that. We never know that the Bible is like that. And so, alhamdulillah, that book, the 99 reasons, became bestseller in New York at one point in time. And so those are the books that I've written so far. The sixth book is, uh, is still, you know, on course. I have two more chapters to finish before it comes to, uh, to the public, inshallah. What is the title of that book? Okay, I can't hide it because uh, <laughs> the book is not out yet and I don't want to give it out. You know, on the right time, I, I didn't even give it the name, but I know the name that I'm going to be giving around, you know, but I didn't give it the name. But I, I'm, I, I didn't even mention if I'm speaking on science or comparative or the, or the logic of Islam. No, 
uh, but I, I, I know what I'm writing. Inshallah, by the, by the mid of this year, I mean next year, 2021, uh, June, July, it should be ready, and uh, uh, you see that on all media outlets, inshallah. Okay, Sheikh, um, to move further, you are a debater. How many debates have you had um, so far, and with whom have you had such debates? Okay, I debated a lot. It sounds very harsh. It sounds very, very like fighting. But really, a debate actually means to debate, to put you know a topic across and let have, let everybody talks about it, and then we see the way forward. And then I've I've debated a lot of people, prominent among them. I think I debated with uh, Lazaro Lopez. I debated with uh, Dr. Tony Costa. I debated with Dr. Um, yeah, he's this white guy, bald-headed in America. I forgot his name. Dr. Somebody, I forgot. And then I debated again, one, two, three, four, five, about six or seven, about seven different debates in Nigeria alone. I debated in Trinidad and Tobago, that is east, uh, south, that is the, the Caribbean. I did some debate there, and I also debated in, 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 in Europe, debates. I debated in Ghana many, many times. Some were documented, some were not documented, some were out, some were in the media. You know. So I don't know exactly how many times I debated, but I debated a lot. Yeah. So talking about the, um at one point you were to have a debate in Ghana here, but that debate was called off. What was the reason why and with whom was that debate? Yeah, I remember um, there's a lot of people calling me and texting me and inboxing me on media outlet that uh, there is this guy, there is this guy that is, uh, you know, uh, bad mountain about Islam saying things that is not true, trying to confuse the people. He was saying that there is no religion. Religion is irrelevant. God didn't send Jesus. He didn't send Moses. He didn't send Muhammad. And that religion is the thinking of the people that created all these things so they could subjugate the people. And so, uh, he doesn't think think Islam is a religion and you know there's a lot of people that are following him and they think I should come and debate him so when they told me I just brushed it off because I was busy doing other things and then the following year and then for so for the past four years five years people have been so finally when I came last year I was told that uh, I should debate him so Kofi TV set it up so Kofi TV uh, I spoke with him he called they called and um, uh, we talk and everything so they asked me what topic are we going to talk about I said well um I think his name is Abraham, Abraham Moshe's of life is different, absolutely. And so eventually uh, we agreed to speak on a topic. So they asked me which topic. I said, look, you want to choose a topic, that will be fine with me. I don't want to choose a topic. You choose whatever topic you are, you are comfortable with. So finally we decided, okay, since he doesn't believe in God Almighty, that uh, he sent prophet, or he doesn't believe in the Quran, and that is me, I believe in the Quran 1 million percent. So I said, okay, why don't we talk about whether Muhammad is a true or false prophet? So he agreed. So the timetable was set. When the flyer came out, all of a sudden I received calls from all over the world, from England, from Germany, from Japan, from the United States, in Ghana here, in Nigeria. People say, don't debate him. You know, he's not your size. The guy is, is, is just, he's just out there to make money. And uh, he's going to use your name to show off that, okay, he has debated Sheikh Mohammed Awal. And then his sympathizers were going to support him and stuff like that. And so uh, there was a lot of big commotion. And so I decided to, um, okay, hold on to it. And eventually it was called off. But I was ready. You know, I, I was just ready to go because I believe I have um, the truth with me. So somehow people canceled that thing, you know. But, but I'm, just, I'm, not, I'm just hoping that someday somehow we could do it. Even if we're going to do it, it should be on television. But... Now that the social distancing is sort of like easing up, I would like one day to debate him in public, maybe in the National Theater or some open space where everybody will come and witness. So I'm not ruling that out. Hopefully, you know, we will do that. But uh, for now, I think it's canceled. And the Muslims don't like me to debate. It's the youth want me to debate. A lot of people, I know you want me to debate. <laughs> but uh, for some reason, you know, so we just, you know, we're there. Hopefully, maybe, you know. Mm. Okay, um, this is Sheikh Mohammed Awal. Uh, we are having one-on-one -on -one interview with Sheikh Mohammed Awal, um, knowing the personal life about Sheikh, which many people really don't know. Um, Sheikh, on the field of um, debate, who has been your ever 
um, let's say, a difficult debater, someone who you think gave you a tough time, not really defeated you, but gave you at least a tough time, something to think of? There's only one person that always comes up. Okay. Uh, this debate came off in Michigan State, in, 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 in Michigan some church a very big church and uh they they've called many muslim scholars to come and debate him uh, i think they shy away from him i don't know the reason why and that was the beginning of my you know uh, da'wah thing i felt okay i could do it i want to go out there and defend islam not knowing that the guy he knows very well what he's doing he knows the quran very well uh to some extent and he knows some hadith and he, he, he he's a good muslim and so i took upon that I'm going to debate him. So I wait, they send me a ticket. I fly to uh, Michigan State, got me a hotel. We talk about it, and then eventually the next day we went to um, the forum and we debated. Uh, the topic was, is the Quran the word of God or the word of man? And we debated on that. In fact, he um, he kind of made me sweat a little bit. Yeah, because uh, I wasn't expecting what uh, yeah he was going to say. I didn't anticipate that, but it looks like he knows exactly what he's doing, and he has did his homework very well. So eventually, that we debated, I tried. He didn't like beat me up, but I wasn't expecting it to be that tough. Uh, I thought I could just, you know, bamboos him and go my way, but it wasn't like that. But uh, uh, that was that was that was the only debate so far in my life that I think I had a tough time. Uh, beside that, uh, later on, after 10 years, I decided, okay, this guy, man, I got to go for the second round. So I asked for, they call them Alpha and Omega uh, something. So I asked for if we could debate again. Uh, they keep telling me tomorrow, the next day, tomorrow, the next day. Now they know, okay, the time is up, man. If we debate again, it's going to be... <laughs> so somehow they didn't accept my debate. Man. But so far, that's the only debate that I felt that uh, I sweat a little bit. Okay, listeners, this is Kofi Jesse TV. You can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. You can also subscribe to our channel on YouTube, Kofi Jesse TV on YouTube. And all this interview will be posted. Um, Sheikh, who is um, one debater that you think couldn't even match you? There is one guy in Nigeria... I was there in Kano when these, my guys told me that there is a guy in Abuja is making noise about wanting to debate me and that he got a big church, he have a lot of followers, and so his followers are going to be listening, and since I'm here, I should do it. Otherwise, they're going to go out and tell everybody that I ran away. I said, okay, fine, let's do it. So uh, they say, when are you? I said, I'm ready today. Any day you're ready, I'm ready. Just give me the topic. So they said, okay, they called the guy, he says he's ready. So the following week, I went to Abuja and a women's center. It's a very big, 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 huge center. And that's where we went and uh, the debate took place. And I felt sorry for him, man. I was like, damn, man, you got to go back to school, bro. And uh, I, I was, <laughs> I just decided, you know, I, so I started to tap him a little bit. I don't want to go, I might hurt him or something. So the, the guys that he brought a lot of Christians who came there and they 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 hung their head down in shame because I was like teaching him his own book and everything. He kind of lay low on him, but uh, later I hug him and I ask him to go and read with all due respect. Go and do some more research about Islam, not about the Bible. Read about Islam. Get any weak point and please come back, and I'll be ready for you any time, any day, rain or shine. You know. Okay, Sheikh. Um, at one time, in, at one point in time, we heard that your um, debate with one of the um, Christian scholars in America was bound on national TV. What was the issue? Okay, that was in Seattle, Washington. Actually, I live in Washington State. I live in Washington State, and that's where we debated. I debated with Lazaro Lopez. And the place was jam-packed. The fire service and the police department came to the uh, debate ground. And they said, if one person enter in that building again, they will, they will shut the debate off. Because it's just so packed up and packed up. They are afraid that the wall may cave in. So um, the debate was a very easy one for me. It wasn't that easy, but it was easy for me because, hey, I did the best that I can. And when I'm done, some Muslim community decided they want to put 
have some television for everybody to see. So they went to the television station uh, to buy time. When they went to buy the time, just because they are Muslim, they double, they double the price, whatever that is. So the, the Arab guys were very, you know, <laughs> hyped up. So they pay for whatever amount. So they showed that uh, on local television in Washington State. And the following day, people started pouring into our, into our office. They want to know more about Islam. They want the Quran. <clears throat> they want to get the debate and stuff like that. So within the first months after the debate, we had a lot of people, thousands, you know, uh, accepted Islam. So the government at that time, he realized if care is not taken, this state might turn out to be Saudi Arabia. So they say, okay, we banned that debate. You can't, you can you, uh, they're not going to show it again. So when they did, uh, the, uh, the more they did try to ban it, the more people want to buy the DVD and read. The same thing applies to my book, 99 Reasons Why Jesus is Not God. Again, they banned that book. When they banned it, that's when I make a lot of money. Because the book was finishing everywhere you go. They want, you know, white people, they want to buy and see what is it that they banned. So they bought the book a lot. Yeah, and so I even went to Hajj to thank Allah, you know, that year because of... Uh, <laughs> so finally, when they realized people are buying even more... It's okay, 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 okay. We have taken back our ban. There's no more banding. You know, it's just normal. But it's too late. So, yeah, that was, that was it. Yeah. Okay. Um, Sheikh Mohammed Awal, as we are having an interview with him about his personal life, we want to know who really Sheikh Mohammed Awal is. I am your host, Nuh Ahmed. You can call me Say Nuh. Just subscribe to our channel, Kofi JC TV, on YouTube, or follow us on Facebook, WhatsApp and Twitter as Kofi Jesse and you are going to get more information about Sheikh Mohammed Ahmed Awal. Um Sheikh, to your personal life, how many Hajj have you um performed so far? Uh four. Are you do you intend to go perform anymore? Definitely I do intend to go and I would have I would have gone last year but because they banned because of the COVID thing so I couldn't go. But hopefully, inshallah, uh, I'm looking ahead. If next year there is no, you know, uh, if they allow people to social intermingle, you know, the Hajj rituals is very close thing. I don't know if they lift the ban. You know, if they do, definitely I'm going to go, you know, inshallah. Okay. So, um, to your traveling, we know you are one of the busiest person when it comes to um, Dawa. How many countries have you travel so far? <laughs> that, it, that would be a very difficult one. Um, America is 50, one, 50 states. I've been to about 45 states. It's like saying you've been to 45 countries in Africa. America is huge, man. Very huge. And I've been to a lot of states. Some states I've been there. I even traveled there many, 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 many times. Some once, some twice, some three. Some. So I travel a lot. And then I've been to Canada uh, many times. Um, I've been to South America, I don't know, about seven, eight countries in South America. I've been to Europe many, many, many times. In Africa, I've been to so many countries. Uh, I've been to part of the East and then the West and, and the North, Central. I've traveled a lot. And in Ghana, I've been to almost all the regions. In Nigeria, almost all the regions. And traveling is uh, the order of the day. I need to get a pen and paper to start thinking about the, the name of the... But I've been to many, many countries in almost all the continents. Um, Sheikh, at one point in time, we heard, because of your vast traveling, um, you were even um, arrested or detained in America. Was that true? Well, uh, there was a time that I was coming home. I think I was coming to... I was going to, some, I would go to Nigeria. So at the airport, I was stopped. And the, I saw plain clothes, you know, uh, policemen and security men. And uh, so they came, about 12 or 13 of them. And they showed me their bag that uh, they are from government and uh, they want to have a word with me. I said, okay, sure. First of all, can we have your passport? I gave it to them. Can we have your ticket? I gave it to them. Where are you traveling to? I told them. Uh, so they, 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 they keep on asking me a lot of questions. If you travel, what do you do? Do you force them to accept Islam? Uh, who, is, who is sponsoring your traveling? Uh, because we've seen you traveling so many, many places, and definitely you have to have someone that is supporting your fine, you know, financially. Otherwise, you can't be able to do this. So I told them, well, yes, I don't have any sponsor. 
The only person that sponsors me is any nation or any group of community. They want me to come and present to them. They buy me tickets. They buy me. They get me hotels, get me food. And that's it. So I don't have, like, a particular sponsorship. They try to make me say something that is not true, but I told them, hey, this is Islam. They asked me if I know some top, top figures, Islamic scholars in the world. Some I know. I met them personally. Some I didn't. They, they say, can, can I speak about them? I say, I can. It's against Islamic spirit to speak about somebody when the person's not there. Me, I'm here. You want to ask me any question, I'm ready to give you the answer. But then you go back and find them, and then you ask them the question. Me, I cannot say anything about them. And so that, that, that has happened about four or five times. Yeah, yeah. So when I was coming, I, I, I got the same issue. Anytime I'm traveling, I got the same issue. When I'm going back, I know definitely they're waiting for me. Uh, they know exactly where I go, what I say, and everything. I'm even surprised how do they know. Even surprised that they know the date that we're having this year. This is America. The technology is beyond our imagination. They may know. Because when I went to South America in the Caribbean, I went and did some lectures. I, they asked me to list down all what, where I have been. I listed it down, and I forgot one place. That is West Indies University you know, in Trinidad and Tobago. And uh, they said, oh, Mr. Mohammed, you forgot to put one. I said, okay, which one? They said, well, you, you forgot Trinidad and Tobago. And I was shocked. How do you know? They said, it's up to us to know whatever we want to know. He also to answer the question. I said, okay, sorry. So I put it down. So that tells you that um, if they really want to get you, they could get you. But so far, they, have, they, didn't, they didn't find me with any single wrongdoing because I'm only presenting Islam just like anybody else. The Christian is to, is, is to present Christianity the way he wants it. Islam is a missionary religion. Christianity is a missionary religion. We are all out there to get as much adherence as possible. So I'm doing, you know, I'm propagating Islam to the best of my ability. So they realize that in America we have freedom of speech. So, you know, they, they, they finally let me go. Okay. Um, Sheikh, I'm talking about the um, Islamic scholars. Do you have any friendly relationship or any contact with other renowned Islamic scholars in other countries? Like who, for example, since I know a couple of them. Okay, um, like um, Sheikh uh, Moved Mink. Uh, Moved Mink is my pal. You know, as a matter of fact, uh, the day before yesterday we we had a talk, and uh, Halid Yassin is my cool friend, and uh, you know, Bilal Philip is my cool friend. Uh, we uh, we talk once in a while, you know. We're all busy, and uh, Zakir and I we we talk once, but we chat and everything. So we cool. Okay. You also mentioned about um, Sheikh Ahmed Didat. Do you still have any contact with the family of Sheikh Ahmed Didat? Well, it's been a long time, and uh, the only person that uh, uh, one of his son. It's Abdullah Didat and Yusuf Didat. These are the ones that are prominent. They are out there talking about uh, Islamic Propagation Center that Sheikh Didat uh, established. Uh, with uh, Yusuf Didat, we had, we had contact. We communicated for a very long time. He called me when I was in the state, and we spoke and everything. But I think he passed away. And so, um, yeah, we do have contacts. But uh, Abdullah Didat, since I left there, there's no contact. Uh, Yusuf Didat is more up there, you know, so we have contact with it. I know one of his daughter, uh, we communicated, you know, softly like that. But alhamdulillah, the, uh, the community of South Africa is there. Islamic Propagation Center is still there. And people are learning compatible religion, inshallah. Um, we are still with Sheikh um, Ahmed at his residence at Akikrum. Um, still talking about Sheikh, his personal life. And the rest. But Sheikh, we will come home to talk about the family. But before we come to the family, um, we learned you were once a footballer. Can you talk to us about uh, which teams have you played? I think it was in Germany also. So, yeah, at the early stage, uh, there was time that I went to Germany from Kano. We had a scholarship to go to Damto University, it's the University of Damto, that is in Hamburg. So I went to. Um, Germany and I, before I started my program, I have to learn the la I, I still speak German language. Yeah, you want me to speak something? Okay. Okay. Well, ich heiße Sheikh Mohammed Awal. Ich war in Deutschland uh, long, long geschon. And uh, ich spiele Fußball, weiß da, in auch, uh, aber ich komme aus uh, Ghana oder Nigeria. Alles klar. 
Um, that's what it is. You know what I said? I said, well, uh, my name is this and that. I live in Germany before and I play football there. You know. <laughs> yeah. What was the question again? Which, which team did you play for? Okay. Uh, in Germany, when I was there, I played um, the local uh, team in my neighborhood, which they call the place Oxenstall. That is the neighborhood that I lived in. So I, I was playing with the local team. And eventually somebody saw me and he decided, okay, you have to take it to a prominent... Uh, so we went to uh, Hamburger Hasfau. And Hamburg Hasfau is the third division. But I play with the... Uh, no, it's the first division. Like Munchen and, uh, you know, it's a Munich. Okay, like Munich and Cologne and this and that. They are like that. But uh, me, I didn't play the, uh, the top tier. I was playing the third division. Before they play, we have to come and play. Why so? Because at that time, I don't have enough documentation. So I was playing the third division in the stadium. Uh, and, and then I play. I'm a scorer. I dribble a lot. Yeah, I like to, I like styles, you know, Sulia, that kind of stuff. They don't know that. I, mean, I just disgrace them you know, on the field and stuff. So I'm a, I, I was a very good uh, uh, footballer too. And people were fighting to get me to play with them. I scored goals, man. And I, I ran so fast. If I, if I ran, catch me if you can, man. There's no way you're going to catch me. And uh, I have good balance. And Alhamdulillah, back then. And, 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 and so, yeah. Now I just jog a little bit just to keep fit. You see, I don't have too much fat in me. I'm always jogging. I'm always doing fit thing. But uh, I do play basketball when I was when I go back to the state. Here, we do, there, there's no facility for me. But in the, in the state, maybe two twice a week or three times a week. If it's winter, I go indoor. I register with you know. I I shoot some hoops. Yeah, I play some basket a little bit. But uh, soccer is the game, you know. <laughs> okay, Sheikh. So, um, you were speaking Dutch. How many language do you speak? Okay, um, first of all, let's begin from home. I speak Fanti, and of course, I do understand Chi also. I speak uh, Hausa, and I speak a little bit of Fulani, that is my tribe. I speak a little bit of it. And then I speak German, I speak uh, Dutch, that is Holland, you know, Netherlands. Because Hebrew, you know, uh, uh, Dutch and Dutch is like Fanti and Ashanti, it's very close. So I kind of speak, and I, I do understand a little bit of Spanish because in America it's a lot of Spanish people there. Anywhere you go, we got a lot of Spanish. Second language in America, and then I speak some Arabic, of course. So about eight, nine languages, you know, you know, yeah. That's great. <laughs> it helps me when I go uh, do some lecture. But I once heard you speaking Hebrew. Yeah, I do speak some Hebrew. Again, Hebrew is very easy. Because if you understand Arabic, it, it will be very easy for you to speak Hebrew. You know, there, it's like sister language. It's, it's, it's like Semitic language. They are all from the same roots. Uh, like they say Shalom, we say Salam. They say Kitab, we say Kitab. They say Um, we say Um, which is the mother. Uh, they say uh, Sarek, thief, we say Sarek, the same. They say uh, El, Elah, Eloi, we say Allah, you know. They say yom, we say yawm. So Arabic and Hebrew is so very, very close. They are all Abrahamic language of revelation. So it's easy for me to learn the Hebrew language. It, 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 it does help me when I'm doing some presentation on comparative religion. It's easy for me, you know, to uh, speak. Okay. Um, the way Sheikh speaks almost nine or ten different languages. Um... We are going to talk about Sheikh, about the family. But to go to Sheikh, kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel, Coffee Jesse TV. You can also on Twitter with the same handle, Coffee Jesse TV. Sheikh, how many wives and children do you have? Well, um, the first wife that I married was in America. Uh, she's a white woman. And uh, she converted, uh, and then we married, and, and Allah gave us two children, Ahmed and Jamil. Jamil is the elder. And then, uh, for some reason, she couldn't, you know, stay with me because I travel a lot, and I can't compromise my dean because she found me in that in that in that in that way of life. 
And so eventually she, we became good friends and we parted ways and she went and got married. And when I came back to Africa, I married my wife, you know, and uh, Mariama. And um, we're still here. And then last three years, I married again in the United States. She's, she's, she's also Fulani, but she's been in America for, since when she was young. But uh, and she's, a, she's a doctor. And so I married her. And we're still together. And Allah in his wisdom didn't give me two my children, you know, just two. And one passed away. Ahmed passed away, so I have Jamil. And you see, Allah, Allah does whatever he wants to do. You know? I want more. I want a lot of children, but Allah said, no, nah, I'm going to give you this. So, so, so far, that's, that's, you know. So are you not bothered with it, not having enough children as you wish? If I could get, that would be good. But I, Allah... I'm planning, and Allah, Allah is also planning. If Allah give me as much as I can, of course, I would, uh, I would be very glad. But as it is, um, I don't have, and I have to be patient. <laughs> so that's that's what it is. Yeah. Okay. Um, viewers, we have a lot to talk about, but the time is not on our side. Uh, we would like to leave um, Sheikh as he want to endure in his holidays. Um, Sheikh, when are you going back to the state? Uh, to which, where is your next um, location, your next move? Okay, uh, my next move now is in Sierra Leone. I'm, I'm going to be going to Sierra Leone in about three weeks. So from Sierra Leone, I'm going to come back and then go to Nigeria. From Nigeria, I'll take, I'll take off, inshallah, back to the United States. And then hopefully uh, during Ramadan, if Allah wills, I will, I will come back again. But for now, I'm resting and uh, reading and researching and answering questions and checking my Facebook, you know, social media. And that's where that's where it's at. But I'm I'm here. I'm resting. But I'm going to be traveling pretty soon, inshallah, on the 27th of January, 2021, inshallah. So you are here till 27th of January. I'll be leaving 27th of January back uh, to um to Sierra Leone. And then I'll spend about, I think, eight days and then come back and get ready for Nigeria, spend about 10 days. And then, inshallah, I would uh, prepare to leave back to the United States because I have other programs around the same time. I plan everything. Okay. Um, Sheikh, we would like to thank you for your time sharing this memorable moment with us. Kofi uh, JC TV and its viewers would like to thank you. What's your final words to your fans? Well, my final words, words uh, it's a lot of people uh, every day, thousands of people, Sheikh, I want to be like you, Sheikh, I want to be like you. Uh, I, would, I would say to them like this, uh, nobody can be like me. You know, you, can't, you just can't be like me because I'm unique, and you are unique, and she's unique, everybody's unique. Allah created each and every one of us unique. The only thing you could do is to try to be better than me. If you try to be better than me, that means... Islam will, you know, is, is, is progressing. And the only way you could do that is to read and research. Once you're done reading and research, then you start to read all over again. When you finish doing that, you begin to read again. You always constantly have to be researching because you need to have a lot of information, current information, past information, different religion. You know, you have to read overall. You have to read all, all, everywhere, anything. And then, but you have to be grounded first in your religion before you make the next try, inshallah. Okay, viewers, this is where time will permit us. We had an interview with Sheikh Ahmed Muhammad Awal. I was your host. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, uh, on Kofi JC TV. You can also subscribe to our channel on Kofi JC TV at YouTube. My name is Ahmed Nuhu. You can call me, say no. Thank you, Sheikh, for your time. All the best. May Allah strengthen you. May give you the power. Ability to continue in your way of life. You also do in the hour. May Allah, may Allah strengthen us all, inshallah. Thank you very much. Viewers, this is where time will permit us. See you next time, if God permits. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.